Welcome back, Mr. Goodberry. The first Star Logistics Studio is fully equipped and ready to record. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Bengals on the Brain. I'm your host, Joe Goodberry. The show is presented by First Star Logistics. Today's show, we're going to look at the defensive side of the ball. We've got a lot of film queued up for you guys. If you missed Tuesday's episode, it's still relevant. You can go back. We look at offensive players, make offensive plays from the preseason game against the Packers. This is more of strictly defense. I thought there was enough to cut up and split it in the in the two episodes, which is probably how the routine will go in a lot of cases uh, during the regular season. If there's enough interesting things to talk about if it's a bad loss we may just want to turn the page and keep it moving but as of now even though the Bengals lost to the Packers the defense was really really good and when you get a pick six and another interception you get some timely sacks and forced fumbles and things of that nature and stops in the red zone then overall you can say the defense was really good they did give up some big runs I'm not going to focus on that some of that was the fault of guys that I don't even believe will be on the practice squad so we can skip that for now. We want to look at guys that are going to contribute to the Bengals roster, potentially make the practice squad. And we got a lot of young guys, too, that were just drafted this year to get an, eye and, uh, get an idea of how they're playing and what their progress looks like. So we'll dive into the film. I've got at least 10 minutes to go over. Probably end up stretching that into 15 as I pause it and you know do as I normally do. And then we'll come back and we may touch on a little bit of what we want to see for Friday's game in Atlanta against the Falcons. First time seeing Jesse Bates, huh? But let's get to the film right now. All right, first guy and first play from last week's film against the Packers is number 95, Zach Carter. I have him circled there for you. And Carter's got to be a guy that's, well, it'd be nice if the Bengals had him to step up in year two, right? If he can become an impact player for this defense. You see him here taking on the double team, dropping to a knee, which helps you keep balance, keeps you from losing ground, and is able to fill the hole and the gap and help make a play, make the tackle. But this isn't what Carter was bad at doing last year at all. It just, this shows his strength and maybe his ability to uh, take another step in that department. But he was a solid run defender last year. We need to see if he can rush the passer and add a little bit of juice from the inside. He only got five snaps against the Packers, so this isn't the game to look for. It. Next play up, here's a guy also. We need him to step up. Number 23, Dax Hill in year two. He made an amazing play. One of the best plays from the week one of preseason. And I'm showing you from this angle, because I'm sure you all have seen the wide angle at this point, where he is covering a lot of range, covering a lot of ground, shows that speed. I want you to see it from this side and see what the, the chess match is between he and the quarterback as you get Jordan Love with his eyes. This is really straight down the center of the field. I've got it crooked a little bit because he's, he's a righty. His shoulder is going to be slanted that way. But he's trying to hold Dax Hill down the center of the field because he knows where he's going to throw the ball. So he needs Dax to stay there. And then he's going to flip real quick and launch it deep downfield, to which Dax, of course, gets over, makes a play on the ball. But the thing I want to show here with Dax Hill is that he's tracking this ball. You can see his head is up and tilted and turned. He sees the ball the entire way. Well, a lot of guys, a lot of athletes that aren't great football players, when they look for the ball, they slow down. This even happened with John Ross a lot when he was really struggling with the Bengals. When they have to look up and track the ball and, and run with the ball, they don't turn into great athletes anymore. This is not the, an issue with Dax Hill here. He sees it. He's running with it. And he is at full speed and stride. His head is turned all the way up. And he's able to play the ball in the air. No problem. That's an elite athlete. That's also a good football player. That is a that is an A-plus play for excitement on, on how high do we want to get. How hyped do we want to get on Dax Hill's year two? Another Jordan Love using his eyes to try and move defenders. We're, we've got our eyes here on Akeem Davis Gay, their number 59. Whew, he got he got tricked a little bit. Now he's going to fall back in the zone here. They're showing Sugar in the A-gap. Two linebackers, 51, 59 in the A-gap. Hopefully trying to get a free edge rusher in this situation. 
and he's going to drop into coverage, okay? And you've got Jordan Battle and Akeem Davis Gaither. Akeem Davis Gaither's eyes on the quarterback. He did take a peek to the left to see if Luke Musgrave was coming his way. Now, he and Battle need to communicate, right? Battle's got to be telling him, hey, he's running through. Whatever you want to say, whatever the keyword is for him, if it's in, in, in. Uh, point is here that Davis Gaither's a little too in on the eyes of Jordan Love. Doesn't expect the young quarterback to be able to move him the way he did. So Jordan Love is is looking at this window between Battle and Akeem Davis Gaither. Akeem Davis Gaither is ready to jump it. Love quickly snaps his shoulders, goes the other way with it. What about a big gain? But quarterback is still a bit inaccurate. And actually, I think that target goes down to Dax Hill. If you look at like PFF charting, that's two targets for Dax Hill. Neither one completed. But neither are actually targets in deck to Dax Hill, in my opinion. One is on DJ Turner. The other one is Akeem Davis Gaither. I assume they adjust that in the grades and all that, but uh, I just do think it's interesting that when we talk about targets this year, you got to take them with a bit of grain of salt on this stuff. Eyes on Jordan Battle. I don't actually want to go back and make sure we give this one the, the proper time here. Eyes on Jordan Battle, number 27. Finally get to see a chance uh, to see him make a play. What does he provide to the team? And I think this play shows the physicality and intelligence right away. So we're going to see him, and we're going to make it look like a middle-of-the-field closed defense, one deep safety with another safety up in the box. But that or but battle is going to drop back into a split safety look right at the snap. Now I want you to look down at because we're going to we're going to pay attention to this, but I want you to down, look at the action going in between here. We've got a jet sweep plus a handoff motion going on here and actually pitch it forward to number 11 on the sweep. And Battle is going to read this like right away. Both sides have to defend here. You look down below and look at Osai. He's setting the edge. Uh, the other side of the team is setting the edge and trying to play the run. So this could happen. This could go a lot of different directions. It's a really interesting play. And Battle comes up, fills, and lays some lumber. So that's what he brings. <laughs> Quick reaction, good play speed and lays a hit. Again, let's look at this. I like this play, so I wanted to highlight it. Let's incorporate that, huh? Let's get the ball to Jamar Chase on that thing. Yeah, just the power. He folds on contact from number 27. We're going back to battle 27 here, and they're showing a split safety look pre-snap. Nope, he wants to go rotate. He stops himself because of the motion here. Now he's like, okay, I've got this side. I've got to come into the box. I've got the Coverage underneath as Sidney Jones drops back in his deep coverage. And you're going to see them communicate afterwards. Like, hey, I thought you need to get closer to the sideline. You see 24 saying, I want you to run and take that underneath. Make this throw hard. And you see how he kind of sidesteps when he gets into position? No, we want you to take that hard and undercut that as best as possible. And that's something Lou Anarumo talked about. How did Jordan Battle play after that game? When he's talking to a presser, I think it was the next day after practice. But he said, you could see his legs weren't under him yet after a ham hamstring injury. So we got to see him reacting quicker and, and running a, a bit faster. And I think that is a play where it's an example of that. Dominique Davis, number 72, had a big game. Had four pressures. But I want to focus on this one. We'll get him again later. But Elton Jenkins is number 74. That's the guy that uh, – Gave DJ Reader a head slap and had to get kicked out of practice during their joint practices. So watch, watch Dominic Davis get underneath him and lift him, and then set him down very nicely and gently. I'm sure DJ Reader liked that one in the film room as they as they watched that the day after. Next play here is a weird pitch. I don't know if the quarterback messed this up. I have to assume he did. Looked like he turned with the wrong foot, but that's not the point. Jordan Battle gets a tackle for a loss. We're going to put our eyes on Joseph Osai, who did not have a good day rushing the passer, but played the run really well. But he's got a receiver on him, so he should win this. But, man, if you're a young kid playing football, get that arm in there, long arm. Keep him at bay. Keep that outside arm free and force him back to your inside help. Let them clean up the play. Great job by Joseph Osai on that one. All right, we've got two safeties looking deep, right? So middle of the field open, potentially. Keep your eyes on Tyson Anderson. It's not going to be middle of the field open. He's not going to rotate. He's going to fake it and then drop back down. He sees this right away. We've got a crossing route, and he's going to jump this and take it to the house. 
big day for Tyson Anderson, the second year player out of Toledo, lost his last year, his rookie season with a hamstring injury. But he's a guy they really liked. Let's get our eyes back on Dominique Davis real quick. We'll finish this play up. And outside, swim. Oh, pressure and hit on the quarterback. You can't get plays by your safeties a lot of time unless that those guys up front are winning. Keep your eyes on Tyson Anderson. I want to show one little thing that he's tested like an elite athlete. But when you see a guy that can hop, skip, jump, change directions multiple times while still closing on the ball with his eyes on the ball, well, same things I talked about, Dax, those guys are actually athletes. You can see it. It's They're football players. They're athletes that are football players. Getting both of those are key, and I really like – I'm excited for the upside of Tyson Anderson. I don't know if they buried him on the depth chart on accident because Jordan Battle was there and they're like, hey, we got a high second round grade on this guy. We got to take him. But man, Tyson Anderson, he looks like if that's your fourth safety and all if all these guys hit, if Dax Hill hits, if Jordan Battle hits, if Nick Scott's a good addition, whew, could the safety room get better? Oh man, I don't want to say it. I don't want to get too far too early. But we got 99 here. Miles Murphy, first round pick out of Clemson. Let's see what he does. We got a tackle and stunt maybe where the tackle is going to take the offensive tackle. So the 97 is going to come free up 99 and hopefully loops back inside. But whoa, somebody didn't get the play call there. Who was doing the wrong thing? Was it J2 Fele? Was it Miles Murphy? All the other stunts seem to go off without a hitch. So I'm going to put that down for Miles Murphy just because he's a rookie. There was, you saw him afterwards clap his hands like, huh, you know, I, I think I may have messed up and lost contain there. But that was his worst worst play of the night. This was his best play of the night. And he's going to get a great burst off the line. You see that? Even with a step that he probably could clean up to start with, he gets off this line. Watch his left foot. Left foot. So you're right. Boom. It steps back and plants first. So even... Probably with a better get off. His get off was still pretty good, and he gets around the edge. Flirts with a late hit there. We'd rather not see that. If that's a playoff game, we don't need that. But if we're looking for upside, uh, that might be it for him as a pass rusher. He is, is an, at least an athlete. And then we got J2 Fele. J2 Fele had a big, big, big game. Lou Anarumo called him a gamer. That guy's a gamer. I'm not always happy with him on the day to day after practices, which he laughs off, but maybe he's not. And he says this guy just shows up to play, and he's played in, in big moments and big games for them. And, yes, he has. Let's watch this rush as he wants to go between left guard and left tackle, right? So he's showing this. He's going to burst upfield and then jab step back inside. The idea here is got to get 70 off balance a little bit if you do want to attack that gap. And look at the foot. Look where the 70 plants, right? So both feet end up way outside of his frame, and he is lunging to make contact because he was reacting, right? It's a chain reaction. When Tufele jabs inside, now 70 is reacting with his feet, but his hands are still locked into the player, so he is completely off balance here. This is not what you want as an offensive lineman, and Tufele is going to take advantage of it. So let's rewind it a little bit. Let's, let's look at this. His hands never stop moving. He regains balance, and oh, man, once he's got that guy, he finishes him to the turf and then makes a tackle on Sean Clifford. Big play by J2 Fele. We're going back to Tyson Anderson now. He's showing last time he went. I want to make sure I get this correct. Let me, let me rewind here. Okay, so I highlight him because I want to show last time he was showing two safety deep, and he walked up to be the middle of the field guy. This time he's staying in the middle of the field. So I think Sean Clifford's thinking at quarterback, okay, he's going to rotate into a too high coverage and make it middle of the field open if you have two deep safeties. Instead, what you're going to get here is middle of the field closed. They're never going to rotate. And Clifford never post-snap confirms it. And we still have middle of the field closed. He's still there. You cannot throw this ball over the middle. I mean, it's not our fault on the defensive side. <laughs> throw it, you know, test us. And he does. And Tyson Anderson makes a... Nice grab against the tight end, Tucker Craft. So they drafted two tight ends, if you remember, Luke Musgrave and Tucker Craft. I think that was North Dakota State. I hope I'm not incorrect on that. But Anderson, you see him, eyes locked in from the quarterback. He's got to jump up field, undercut it, and wrestle this from a much bigger tight end and show his strength, show his ball skills. Again, that's a great play. 
Let's look at the defensive line really fast. We talked about tackle and stunts, TE stunts. We got Jeff Gunter here, number 93. He's the one who's going to come in and lay a little bit of a pop on that right guard, and I think that might have freaked out Clifford. Maybe. Could have, because I think uh, both interceptions now, both quick decisions by, by Clifford, we got pressure up the middle, and we got another one coming later. Actually, if we're coming right now. I don't remember the order. We've got quarters coverage here. Quarters. You know what cover two is, right? Cover two is two deep safeties. Cover one, one deep safety. Cover three, three deep defenders. Uh, usually two corners and a middle of the field safety. Quarters is four deep defensive backs. You're protecting here. Okay, this is uh, a much more common coverage than I think it's ever been. It's to play quarters. And so we're going to focus primarily as they got five wide receivers. That's right. I did want to highlight that. So you got five wide, you got empty. We're going to focus primarily on Jordan Battle here, right here. So let's flip this screen in half. And quarters is anytime, his responsibility is anytime somebody gets past the second level defenders, which here I believe that might be Shaka Hayward. It looks like 50. And as soon as the receiver gets past him and into his quartile of the defensive backfield that didn't come out right that should have been a straight arrow anyways <laughs> anytime someone gets past he's got to pick them up so jordan battle is looking at this like okay in the joint practices this receiver ran a corner route on me and they did we saw it, it almost went for a touchdown i think it was thrown out of bounds so battle's ready for this play to be probably similar he even said this after the game he's looking at it like okay at this moment i've got this guy he's going to run past the second level defender i've got to pick him up he ran a corner route last time in uh, the joint practices and let's see how he reacts to it and it's not a corner route right he's going to turn this into a post so he's got a jordan battle's got to flip his hips run with him and undercut it if he can and you see i think it i think he probably could have picked this off had he have had more experience maybe his legs under him, like Lou Inarumo said, because he's really close to making that play. So that's a mental quick recognition, quick processing, and getting in there to make a play. It's big time for him. There's the other angle from, the, from our side on the defense. But I want to quickly point out one of the other good rushes on the night for Miles Murphy was on an actual tackle and stunt. I think he's going to be really good at this. He can be an athlete. You can let the other guy keep you clean, which is where his area of need is. And Dominique Davis does. You see how the way he laid into that left tackle? Let's, let's look at it again. Watch Dominique Davis, 72, come and hit 63 to free up Miles Murphy. Bang! Knocks him completely off balance. Jordan Battle gets in there and knocks it down. Again, I think he could have picked that off. All right, let's keep it moving. We're going to pick on Jordan Battle a little bit here. Tucker Craft's going to get some revenge on these guys. He's mad. Tucker Craft's going to get up to battle, drive him into the ground, <laughs> give him one more shove. Hey, come on now. All right, back to Jay Tufele, who had a big game. Tufele is going to stack, peak, shed, and get the holding call. We'll take holding calls all day. It's a 10-yard penalty. So let's watch him here. Look how that post foot, that back foot, stops and plants into the ground, stops his momentum. He's going to peek back inside, see the running back, not let him get to that gap, throw the blocker back into that side, disengage and reach i'm glad it was called because it's not always called and we'll take that right there because uh ends up being a 10-yard loss for the offense that's a great play by j2 Faley, even though it does not sh show up on the stat sheet in fact the stat sheet doesn't even count to play because there was a penalty it's a great play by him raymond johnson number 56 he got in a little bit early with the twos and then he played a lot with the threes and even as if there are some fours out there they trickled in but he was on the practice squad last year he had a good preseason I want to say it was last year, and he looks at, to have bulked up a little bit. He's playing some defensive tackle as well, kicking inside. Here, we're going to get number 44 for the Packers to come across and try and block him. Watch the contact here. Watch the collision. Boom. Completely levels him, and I know the play goes for a big gain. He lost contain, lost the edge. I, you know, it's preseason. I'm looking for fun. This is a fun play right here. Oh. Decletes him. So, Raymond Johnson, you give up the, the edge on that last play. Here is the last play of today's film review, and it's Raymond Johnson again. 
He's rushing this time. He's going to pretty much seal this game with a sack force fumble coming off the edge. Let's take a look at how that worked out. Oh, yeah. Nice, clean win. Attack the ball, run the arc, and you get to celebrate. Even though your team's losing. Watch that. Boom. Knock that hand down. Rip. Cut the corner. Run the hoop. Knock the ball out. So that was the defensive film. I thought the safety room had a great day. You know, when you can get Dax Hill to make that type of play, when you get Jordan Battle to get his feet wet and look good, and then, of course, Tyson Anderson, if he's your fourth guy, it's a great safety room. Uh, we haven't seen Nick Scott yet. I'd like to see him eventually. I'd like to see – there's some debate on if you should play the starters. Zach Taylor really hasn't leaned that way much in his time in Cincinnati. Uh, hopefully keeping them fresh, I think, throughout the stretch and down later in the year. That could be the play. That could be the direction you go. But – Playing in Washington the following week, if you're going to play your starters, play them in Atlanta. Don't play them on that field in Washington. Don't do that. It, you're asking for trouble there. So I'd like to see a couple guys go this week, whether that's Cam Taylor Britt or Nick Scott. Um, I would probably would limit it to not seeing DJ Reader, not seeing the linebackers. We don't need to see Trey Hendrickson or, or Sam Hubbard or B.J. Hill. I mean, these guys have played a lot. I'm, I'm thinking the newcomers and second-year guys, the next tier, you know, can we see out there Irv Smith? He's a newcomer. Can we see Orlando Brown, Jonah Williams? Maybe this is just a starting offensive line for one drive. I think we're going to get a lot of Chase Brown and Chris Evans again. They need to figure that room out. They need to test these guys as much as possible, give them – pass protection reps, as many as you can get, and that the Falcons will give you. And then can we get these backup offensive linemen in different rotations? Can we see Nate Gilliam? Can we see Ben Brown get more reps with the twos and, and threes, not just late in the fourth quarter where they may look like they're getting a good block, but the other three guys are, you know, having a breakdown, and it's it doesn't help you, right? It, it, it's hard to look good. Uh, against poor competition or with poor players around you. So I thought they were okay, and I'd like to see them get elevated a little bit because I think the backup center job is still a position that is up for grabs. I don't think Trey Hill is – man, we're going into year three now for Trey Hill. Yeah, 2021 draft. He hasn't secured that job. He hasn't grabbed it by the horns. Max Sharping's taking snaps because of that reason. So they got to find a backup center. I'd really like to see Gilliam and Brown get opportunities. I think now that Tanner Hudson, who had a concussion, still not practicing at the time I'm recording this, I doubt he plays as well. Why risk it? He could be the third option as of now. Can any of these other guys, can Bowers, can Asiasi, can one of these guys step up and do something and get into the mix and get into the conversation? And then we want to see Yoshi and, and Charlie Jones. Just get give them each 10 targets if we can. More Charlie Jones this week since we featured Yoshi last week. And he looked good. He passed that test. Give it to him again. You know, I'd like to see each guy get 10, 10 balls thrown their way. That'd be ideal for the evaluation purposes. But maybe even more important, let Charlie Jones kick and punt return. See how he looks at each one of those more often. He went down. He touched the ball three times last week, Charlie. And uh, he went down on first contact every time. Two on a punt, one on a screen. For a guy that's, you know, he hurt his shoulder. So maybe some of that is not being fully up to strength, but he's not a tackle breaker, right? I even wrote that in his report that he went down a little bit early and quick when contacted. You're going to have to tough it and run through some of these, and I'd like to see it a little bit more, so maybe we give him some more opportunities to do so. One of these backup quarterbacks ha has to step up. Simeon or Browning, I don't care who it is at this point, you almost have to question if they each have a bad game, is the backup on this roster, or do the Bengals have to go make a move and find a guy? What's A.J. McCarron doing? He had a great XFL season. I'm half joking, right? I mean, I'd do it. See what he's got. Anyways, defensive side, what I'm looking for, I'd like to see DJ Turner get tested as much as possible. I thought he looked good last week, despite falling on that first one that went deep to Dax Hill. I'd like to see the backup corners between DJ Ivy, Allen George, and Sidney Jones hasn't practiced. We probably won't get him, so we won't get that opportunity. But DJ Ivy and Allen George, can one of them have a complete good game? I thought both tackled very well. I think both have flashed in coverage, but I don't think coverage is each, each of their strengths. So can we see that more? Can we see them be 
be penalty free, not give up a big play downfield. Both did last week. I know Sidney Jones got uh, beat for the touchdown and then another play on third down that a lot of people saw directly, but these other guys also had the same exact thing, gave up big catches and penalties. So one of those guys step up. Can Tyson Anderson keep the ball going? Can he keep the fire, fiery start from week one going and, and, and make a few more plays? Can he become a trade piece? I mean, do you need your fourth safety? How much is he going to play? If he plays that well, do you move somebody? Because you have to play him. Or move him and get a tight end or a running back or center or whatever you can find. But I was thinking about this. Trade pieces, Jackson Carmen. What if you get a really good day out of Jackson Carmen at left tackle in preseason? He becomes a trade piece, right? Because you have Orlando Brown, who's been extremely durable, knock on wood, for a long time, his entire career. But if Carmen can play left tackle and someone sees that as a valuable asset, maybe you can get a third tight end for him. So I'd like to see Carmen have a big day. You got to get some separation maybe between Deontay Smith and Akeem Adenogy, both have positional versatility. Both are borderline rosterable players, I think. That's kind of how the depth looks in the NFL around the league on the offensive line. And then from there, maybe we see Christian punt. And maybe we can get a kick return, punt returner. They still have Lasseter out there returning. And he doesn't seem like he's got a chance. And he made good blocks. That's number 18. I'd still like to see Chris Evans get those opportunities. I'd like to see Charlie Jones get those return opportunities. But now I'm rambling. I want to see everyone play. I love preseason. I honestly do. I like evaluating 1 through 53. Oh, 90. 1 through 90 right now. This has been Bengals on the Brain, presented by First Star Logistics. I'm your host, Joe Goodberry. We've got a game tomorrow. Look out for that. Look out for the tweets at Joe Goodberry as we'll cover it live and interact and have a good time all Friday night leading up to the game, during the game, and then some post-game film reviews. Those usually drop first on Twitter before we get here to Bengals on the Brain. I like to save a lot of the good and juicy stuff for Bengals on the Brain, but a lot of stuff that ends up on the cutting room floor you will find on Twitter, so make sure you follow us there. And until next time, guys. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.